Hello and welcome to Getter Farms. We're back with another episode of Lincoln Creek, Nebraska. As you can see, we've advanced here slightly. We are now into early summer, which is uh, one growth state past where we were before. Uh, interestingly enough, it has uh, jumped us right into having our soybeans actually popping up here, which isn't quite what I wanted. I wanted to get into that... Uh, germinated stage right past planted uh, and spray there but uh, unfortunately the way seasons in this geo is set up we're jumping right into uh, full spraying it looks like which is uh, okay so we're gonna go ahead and just get that done here um, I did test this slightly we were having issues last episode and uh, off camera I did a little bit of testing and it looks like we are going to be able to kill the weeds now so that's good at least i guess and uh everything's working as expected and i also believe that uh all the areas we've already sprayed are preventing more weeds from popping up and we won't have to respray them it looks like sprayer section control is going to uh, detect those areas for us so i was pretty happy about that and you can see the weeds we just drove over back there are turning uh grayed out like you would expect from weeds so I think everything's working. It's just the couple of weed spots over here along the uh, headland that we already took off that we were having a little bit of issues with. With all of that said, uh, we've just got a couple of rounds here that we're going to do out in this field real quick. And then we'll be jumping over to take a look at uh, harvesting field 29, getting into our wheat harvest here. So I'm excited for that as well. And so since we've done a couple episodes of spraying here already, uh, I just wanted to start out here with our uh, spraying that we are doing just to show that everything's working. You can see here this area that we already sprayed. My sprayer section control is kicking in and turning off our booms so that we don't need to spray this headland again. Uh, and so that's really awesome. I'm actually really happy that that's all working appropriately here. So I'm going to go ahead and leverage our GPS track that I just set up. We're going to knock this field out real quick and then we'll road this thing down to the other field that we need to get sprayed here real quick and get him set up with a course play course and we'll jump right into that wheat harvest. And I just want to toss a special shout out to Chris who commented on my last video and gave me a heads up on how the herbicide mechanics and seasons worked and that if I'd sprayed immediately after planting I would have been able to preemptively put down all of the uh, herbicide and no weeds would have popped up and that it's just when they're in that first early state that I can't kill the weeds off so I was really excited about that and uh, very appreciative to the comment as always all right we've got the sprayer over here in field 32 and thankfully, if we uh, pull up the debug map here, you can see that this is a fairly straightforward course. We might run into a little bit of trouble up here on the uh, curvy bit of the headland, but we're going to have faith in course play's ability to get this done for us. So I'm going to go ahead and let this worker go. And it's time for my favorite part of the year, the first harvest. So let's jump back up here into the farm and we're gonna get into our harvester. We have already done all of the prep work. We've got the cutter and everything all set up here and ready to go. And so we're gonna bring this right on out to the field here and get started. It's a small field. We're not gonna have a lot to do up here, but it's gonna be good to get started. And this is our only field of wheat and we're not gonna have a whole lot of it. So I'm thinking we're probably going to end up just selling this straight up to the elevator. Uh, I'm not sure we're even going to put it in a bin because we're not going to have enough capacity. Uh, excuse me, we're not going to have enough volume of crop here to really make it worth our while to store it, I don't think. It's just a lot of uh, man hours to go ahead and get a bin set up specifically for wheat. We may look at uh, expanding our wheat operation here in uh, the next season as we hopefully pick up some more fields and stuff in this series. Um, I'm really planning to kind of expand on this farm as time goes on here. We'll see how it goes. Uh, it really is going to depend on how much money we make here in the first season. But first, we've got to get up to the field here. So I'm going to go ahead and leverage our awesome auto drive course here 
to send this combine all the way up to field 29, uh, allowing us to jump back over to the farm here and actually get the grain truck. We've got our handy Ford grain truck here, and we've got some logos in the mail coming soon to slap on the side of this truck. But I'm really digging having a couple of different options. I think the semi is going to be a bit of overkill for us here. Uh, hauling this wheat back. I don't think we're going to really have that much wheat off of this field. And so it's nice to have a little grain truck here. Uh, it's a little bit more flexible. We're going to be able to get into this little field here and get things unloaded. Um, I'm not planning on digging the grain cart out just yet either. Um, I really don't think we're going to need a grain cart to get into this field with us. Uh, I think we're going to be able to do all of our harvesting with this one combine and uh, dump it straight into the truck here as we get full. I'm not even sure we're going to need more than uh, one or two uh, loads with the combine, to be honest. So I'm really curious to see how this works out. Now, it looks like we are going to catch up with our combine before he gets out to this field, which is okay. I was honestly kind of expecting that. It'll be kind of fun to actually follow along behind him here and uh, see how he does it. Make sure we're not crashing through signs or trees or anything else crazy on this uh, little course that we've got going here. I think I've still got traffic turned off on this map though, uh, just because when you're trying to use auto drive to run your equipment around the map, it doesn't tend to do really well with uh, AI traffic. So we're gonna continue to probably leave AI traffic off on this map, but it's kind of cool having a uh, convoy of vehicles going here especially when i'm not driving leading the uh the pack here it's kind of fun being behind another vehicle of my own that's driving down the road here all right so we're coming up here into this field it looks like our combine has made it successfully and uh i'm gonna park the truck right here as we get everything uh going here we're gonna hop in and Make sure that auto drive's all turned off here. Get this uh, header dropped off here and we'll just go uh, spin around here and pick it up real quick. There we go. And if we zoom in here, we should be able to get, oops, everything unfolded, not the header though. I've been noticing that I have an unusually high amount of bird noises today in game, so that's just a little bit odd. All right, so we're here. We're got the harvester all set up. We're going to go ahead and jump into things and start harvesting this wheat. Now, I am going to leave our straw swathing turned on here. Um, a little bit of... Uh, what little bit of research I've done, I saw that... Uh, a lot of people were baling straw in the Nebraska area. And so we're going to leave that on here and uh, see about getting a baler and baling up this straw and seeing if we can find a uh, local farmer to sell this to. It'll be a fun change of pace. I've not done a lot with straw in the past. I'm not sure it's going to be entirely worth our time, but I thought it'd be kind of a fun way to experiment with the new bale loading mode in uh, Courseplay. Courseplay has a mode now where it will go around the map and pick up all of the bales that are uh, in a field. And that sounds like something that I want to play around with. So. We're going to make some bales here, and uh, we're going to play around with that a little bit. First off, though, we are going to open up this field. This is a pretty small field, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to do it on our own. Uh, we can always use the in-game helper if we need a little bit of assistance finishing off this field. Uh, however, at least for opening it up, I uh, felt like doing the first harvest of the map on my own here. And uh, we're getting pretty good yields here. We're getting 104 bushels an acre, which isn't bad considering that we didn't get a chance to do much of anything with this field. Uh, we did get out here, I guess, and spray it at one point. I'll be kind of curious if I uh, pop open the mini map here and take a look at our harvest map. It looks like we're getting pretty good yields, all things considered. 
And if I bring up the precision farming map here real quick, you can see in this field 29, we did actually get nitrogen up here. Sorry, we're uh, coming up on the corner. Let me just stop for a moment. We did get nitrogen up here. Um, our pH balance is off a little bit. So, eh, it's, you know, it could have been a better field, but this is going to work out pretty good for us. We probably lost out on maybe, I'd say, 10% of our potential yield capacity here. And so getting 100, 106 bushels an acre is pretty good, especially for wheat. And uh, just looking at how fast we're filling up, we might actually uh, fill that truck up at, uh, now that I think about it. We're already at a third of a hopper here. I can't recall how big that truck's uh, grain bed is. So we'll, we'll check it out here. We'll get around the headlands, I'm pretty sure, with the combine, or at least the majority of the headlands here. And then uh, we'll dump into the truck when we get back up to the entrance there, hopefully, and see... Um, see what I think about how much capacity we're going to have. If it looks like we're going to get a fair amount of wheat, like more than I expect, maybe we will put it in a bin. I don't know. We've got uh, a little bit of time to think about that still, though. So let's, uh, let's keep harvesting here. I'm really excited to move forward with uh, harvest here on this map. Uh, this is the earliest taste here of harvest, and it's got me really excited to get into... Uh, harvesting our corn. I know we're going to have some high volumes on some of those fields. And uh, I always get excited when we're doing a corn harvest because it's uh, a high yield crop and you have a lot of moving pieces and you're trying to figure out how to keep everything moving efficiently. This will be one of the first times that I've done sunflowers in Farm Sim. At least uh, the first time I've done sunflowers in Farming Simulator. Uh, no, that's not true. I did sunflowers on the Royalton series, but I don't really remember how well they yield. Um, I think they definitely yield lower um, bushels per acre than corn does. Um, so it'll be interesting to have a few different crops that we're keeping an eye on and managing. The one thing that I do wish is that all of the crops didn't come up for sale at like the same periods of time with seasons, uh, that it was spread out a little bit more in the year, or that you were able to um, sell futures on your crops so that you were delivering them in different months, uh, rather than having all of our uh, crop delivery due at the same day in seasons for both our corn and our soybeans are gonna typically be sold in that same period of time. So that's my, uh, I guess, one of my few small gripes with how Seasons has implemented some of the economics of Farm Sim. If we pop our HUD back on here for a moment, we can see that we're doing pretty good here. We're at 59% of our capacity in the hopper. And uh, yeah, yield is averaging at 98 bushels an acre right now which is a little bit lower, um, and that's gonna be primarily due to the change in soil type on the edge of this field here. If we pop open the precision farming map here real quick and go to soil types, you can see in the left-hand side of this field, we've got loby sand, which is uh, one of the worst soil types that you can get. Uh, and so that really kind of tamped down our yield a little bit here. The sandy loam as well, kind of uh, lowers that yield compared to the loam, which is uh, the best soil type that you could ask for in Farm Sim. We're gonna just have to deal with it. That's the type of soil that we have, um, but we can expect to see that uh, hit to the yield there uh, with precision farming. Also, it looks like our sprayer has finished spraying here in that other field. And so I think what we're gonna do, since our hopper is getting pretty close to full here, is that we're going to take this down to the corner of the field here and uh, get him lined up to start dumping into the grain truck and then we'll go and uh, get this spray here loaded up and send him back towards the farm. Looks like we're coming in at about 80% right now, a little bit more by the time we uh, hit the end row here, which is perfect. Means that we're going to be able to uh, finish opening this up without getting full. I always like when things work out. This is going to be a perfectly sized field for us to uh, kind of get done solo here without a lot of uh, assistance. It's when you can't even make it around the field without needing a grain truck that things start to get a little bit tricky on you. 
So we'll go ahead and get our pipe out here and see if we can back up to this truck without running into anything. And while he's unloading here real quick, we'll jump over into this neighboring field, field 32, and grab our sprayer. Now it looks like he's all done here, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear out his course and we're just gonna drive him right back over to where the uh, spray trailer is and get him all hooked up to that and send the whole rig home. All right, so I've got this all loaded up and it should be as easy as putting him on the road facing in the right direction and saying go. All right, there goes our sprayer and uh, it looks like we're all done unloading the wheat here. So we're gonna get this combine fired back up here. I wanna jump in here. We're only at 27%. So it looks like we'll be able to hold uh, a few more loads of wheat here. Uh, I am gonna pull this up just a little bit. I didn't like how close to the power pole I was back there. And uh, we'll park that right here and get going again on this wheat harvest. Uh, we're going to be able to put two more full dumps in here, I think, which should uh, do pretty good. Um, we'll probably more than fill up one truck and still need uh, additional capacity. So I definitely underestimated how much wheat we were going to pull off of this field, which is a good thing. So with such a big combine here, we are going to want to take off two headland passes, I think, to uh, really make sure we stay out of all of these trees especially with such a big pipe on the end of the combine. And so we're just taking a second pass here around this field, which is really going to open up a huge chunk of this uh, field for us. Uh, we're probably going to end up taking, uh, let's see, if we did, we're at four acres of harvested ground so far, and we were probably at three when we were done around the headlands there. It's only like a 13, 14 acre field, I think. So by the time we go around this twice, we're going to have already harvested about half of the field, maybe a little less. And uh, that's encouraging um, just in that uh, we're going to knock this out really quick. So I love working with these larger, uh, more modern pieces of equipment. You can just cover a lot of ground in a short period of time. And I have to say, this case is looking really good. Uh, we'll see if we can keep it uh, in the field or in the crops here as we're harvesting. But I'm really liking the interior here. It's a good looking combine. And uh, yeah, it all just seems to work really well. So let's see if we can keep knocking out the acres. So we're wrapping up our second time around the field here. And... Uh, as you would expect, because we're a full pass inside, we're not getting nearly as full as we did on that first pass around the field. And as a result, I'm thinking about whether or not we risk just uh, doing another full round here on these long rows. I don't know that we're going to make it all the way around, though. We're at 63% right now. We'll probably be eh, maybe 70, 75 by the time we get to the end. We should probably just dump into the truck here and uh, not try to push our luck. And as we get to the end of the field here, it looks like actually I'm once again underestimating our capacity. We're going to push past 80% here, it looks like, which is uh, awesome. I'm loving this yield. So we're going to just uh, keep trucking here. I'm going to dump this out in our truck real quick. And that should put our truck a little bit over 50%, I expect, which is a good spot to be. And I'm going to adjust this pipe downspout a little bit. I didn't need to be nearly this close to the truck. There we go. And just like that, we are all emptied out again. We're going to go ahead and start taking these long rows now. We've got the... GPS all set up just how we need it, I think. And so a few quick passes here and we should be uh, knocking this field out right quick here.
so we're down to the final short rows here on uh, this field and I think we're actually going to take them the other way. I think that if I look at these rows, they're slightly longer this way. So we're going to pivot here and uh, start cutting this direction. Heck, I don't even know what direction this is. North, south, it looks like. So we're going to cut these north and south here. We'll even uh, reset up our GPS AB line just to uh, help us out with these last couple of rows. And we've still got just a little bit of room in our grain truck, it looks like. I probably won't fit 100% of this wheat in the grain truck, but we won't need to make another trip out here, it looks like at least. I can probably rode the combine back up to the farm with just a little bit of wheat in the hopper, I would think. Um, I've never actually done that before. We always, always made sure that we had all of the grain out of the hopper before we got out on the road with our combines. But uh, I guess we never really ran into a situation where we had so little left uh, that we uh would have felt the need for that i think we always ended up the other way uh, we ran a couple of semis plus a grain truck and a uh, trailer behind it that we always had plenty of trucks out on the field we never had a lack of space it is gonna be just a little bit of a shame though to have a uh, hopper full or so left over here and uh need to take two trips up to the elevator to store it or to sell it i should say I'll be curious to see what we're going to get for it here, though. Uh, I don't expect a lot of money, and honestly, we weren't really even uh, thinking about what we were putting into this field. It just happened to be wheat, and uh, so we're harvesting it. Can't complain when you didn't even have to do the work or pay for the seed to get the crop in the ground. And if we just take a quick look at the economy tab as expected, Winter seems to be the high point for wheat in general. I don't know that we want to hang on to one truck of uh, wheat for all that period of time. So we're definitely going to just run this up to the elevator here. Uh, if we look at our prices, wheat's currently selling for $11 a bushel, which eh, isn't great, but all things considered... Um, it's money in the bank, and we are paying a fair bit on a loan right now. We don't have a lot of operating cash, so it might be nice to pick up a couple bucks here uh, just to have in the bank, pay down on our interest and other things like that. We may even need to be buying some seed and some fertilizer here in the spring again. And just like that, we have wrapped up all of the harvest here in this field. So we're going to run this combine right up here to the field entrance and get the wheat dropped off into our grain truck here and see kind of where we land here. I'm uh, expecting, ah, if I had to take a guess, we'll have about 150 bushels left in the combine when we're all said and done. All right, so we've got just shy of 1,300 bushels in the grain truck here. And if we run around here and jump back into the combine, only 39.5 bushels of wheat left in the combine. So we're going to go ahead and uh, actually I'm going to leave the pipe out here. We're going to shut the combine down though. And we'll hop in our truck here real quick and see if we can't figure out where to deliver this wheat to right down to the FCA in town it looks like. Um, yep, that's going to be the sell point here. So let's jump in our truck real quick. And we're going to just head this right into town. Make a few dollars here real quick. And uh, leave everything else set up to store our larger volume crops for the year. So luckily the FCA is uh, right here in uh, the center of town. Nice and easy to get to it. We should be able to bring our grain truck right on in here. And I think it was the one over here. That's the actual sell point. So let's bring us right in there and start dumping the wheat. We've got to pull forward enough so we don't hit the uh, 
truck on the enclosure here. And just like that, we made 14 grand on uh, one truck of wheat here. So that's uh, pretty good. I've got no complaints about that. We'll run up here and grab that last, uh, what was it? 30 some bushels, 40 bushels of uh, wheat. Get it run down here real quick. And uh, yeah, we'll probably get our combine and everything else sent back up to the yard since we'll have just a little bit of time here before we're ready to get into our next harvesting cycle. And there we go. We've got our last 40 bushels here. We're going to pull over here real quick and get the combine all squared away here and sent back up to the farm uh, just to make sure that we're not leaving our equipment scattered all over the map. And then, uh, then we'll go and sell this grain here real quick. It's not going to sell for much, 40 bushels. It's uh, almost not worth the fuel to drive it up there, but, you know, it is. And honestly, we're right next to town here anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. So we'll just send this guy right on up to the main yard, no problemo. And back into the grain truck we go. One thing we should probably look at as long as we're down here is if I can expand the auto drive network. Uh, to include the FCA so that if I wanted to we could set up a cell course here back into uh, the FCA so let's uh, pull on up here to the stop sign and bring up our auto drive menu here and I think what we're gonna do is do it the same way that I did when I sold it here the last time because that brought us right into the appropriate part of uh, town and it pulled right through for us is uh, coming down this road here and it looks like I've got to track the other way it is a narrow road but since I'm now the only person driving on this road it shouldn't be a big deal we're gonna go ahead and record a course here we're gonna take a tight turn in to avoid hitting any more road signs hopefully And we'll just bring this right on in and through the FCA cell point here. And then uh, we'll create a marker and hopefully we'll be able to get this fine tuned enough that when we do have our semis coming through here to sell as well, that we will be able to leverage this point. I'm just pulling forward enough to get a point to put in here. And we're just gonna call this cell. FCA. Boom. We'll overload our wheat real quick. Not a problem. $435. Not that bad. And then we're going to just keep going here on this recording and pull right on out here and leverage this little one lane road that we've got. And if I bring up my map here, I'm almost positive that I've got an auto drive course on this road to my left. So we're gonna hang a left here and pull through here. And then we're gonna pull right on into this course. It looks like this one, I've only got the road going the other way so far. Um, I think we've got this going all the way up to the field entrance here though. So this will be a perfect opportunity for us to expand our auto drive network oh so slightly and uh, kind of just keep things moving and grooving here and so you can see right here is where we've already got the other path and so if i stop the recording here pull forward out of my own way a little bit and then just grab this point and connect it to this point we've now got an expanded auto drive network that is going to allow us to do a whole lot more uh, as we start selling our grains and doing different things. So with that, we have finished up all of our spring. We've harvested our first field of wheat here, and we've got some straw sitting out there ready to be baled. So that's probably what we're going to jump into next episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, drop a like. It helps the channel out immensely. 
That's all for today. Kederk out. Nope, it figured it out. Oh, it took out the sign. Look at that poor sign. It wasn't me this time. That was auto drive. There we go. It's that easy. Uh, hopefully we're not gonna clip any of these trees and knock our sprayer off. I know somebody in the comments was commenting about, uh... Oh my goodness. Seriously. Well, at least now we know that, uh, that course isn't quite wide enough for this, uh, vehicle. Oh my goodness. Super strength, where are you?